everyone, this is Henry from Fine Land Games, and today we're going to be doing an overview of everything you'll need to know to play Kingdom Animalia. We'll go over setting up games on untapped, building decks, as well as actually playing the game, going through the rules of everything, some intricacies and stuff like that. I'm putting this out right now, um, especially to help people get to know the game before playing in the Kingdom Animalia tournament, which, when this movie goes out, will be just one week away. The tournament will start on September 12th, that's next Sunday, um, and it will span about four weeks, just one game per week. We'll have three rounds and then the, the playoffs. Um, it's going to be done by via Swiss pairings. If you want more details about the tournament, please, please, please check out the Discord. If you have any interest in playing the game, this is a great time to get started. Um, it's very beginner-friendly, very low stakes, uh, we have cash prizes, totally free entry. Uh, and this this video today is going to be your best resource on learning to play, making sure everything gets set up correctly, and really getting a grasp on the game. So we're starting right here on this first screen on Untap. Untap is going to be the online platform we're going to use to play in the Kingdom Animalia tournament. It's totally free to use, um, and all of the cards are available to play on here. I have a separate video talking about uh, intricacies of playing on Untap specifically, but I'll go over a lot of those in this video as well. So the very first thing you're going to need to do before you play a game of Kingdom Animalia is create a deck. Um, you do that by clicking create a deck and then clicking on custom CCG. Give it any title you want. Um, we'll just do testing deck in this case. Custom CCG, create deck. So the way you search for cards, since there's tons of different games sorted, uh, supported by Untap, uh, so there's a ton of cards, you can't just search through and look at every single one of them. Uh, there's different like uh, name tags for the, the cards in Kingdom Animalia. So let's say today, um, for the tournament, I want to play a fish deck. So it kind of explains it down here. If you want to research by certain sets, you'll do uh, colon set equals ka-f for fish. And it's always going to be ka-something, the different types. All that info is on Discord, uh, but we just want to look at fish. So all the fish cards in the game are going to come up here. Um, the basic idea, and I'll go more into it in a bit here, but for deck building, you're going to want a good number of animals that are decently cheap food-wise, that can forage for a good amount of food to work on your economy. That's going to want to be a big chunk of your deck, and then you're going to want uh, various animals at different food costs that you can play throughout different parts of the game with a few, maybe a handful of really big heavy hitters and some adaptations to support everything. So if I go ahead and start putting together a deck here, I know I want to start with some some foragers. So the bluegill, if you just hover over the, the picture on this outside, the card will come up over here on the side here. Um, so I'm looking at the bluegill. The bluegill costs five and forages for three. And again, we'll go into more detail here in a minute. Uh, I want some bluegills, and you will put them under this starts in main deck area. The maximum of each card you can have in your deck is three, so you want to make sure there's three or lower, and the number here, just going up and down like that. And again, this is under main deck, so I want three bluegills. How about another forager? How about some minnows, huh? Here's the minnow card. Let's put in two minnows. And how about one more forager? What do we got? Um, Rainbow Trout is a really, really strong card. It's a very good forager. I'll put that in the deck and we'll do three of those. Now I want uh, some medium sized attackers. This is fish, so a lot of our attackers are going to be sharks. How about uh, some blue sharks? Two of those. Very beautiful animal, the blue shark. Uh, we could do some blue catfish. We'll do one blue catfish. Maybe some black tip sharks. This is a, a staple in fish decks. And now how about uh, one or two heavy hitters? Um, well, I mean, if we're doing fish, we got to put a great weight shark in there. Just put one. This thing's a beast. Strongest card in the game in terms of raw stats. Uh, and we'll put uh, a mako shark in there as well. And then... Maybe some uh, a couple of adaptations. We'll put the reef in and underwater paradise. So we've got 
um, all of our, our cards put into our deck here. Now a deck in Kingdom Animalia has to have a minimum of 30 cards and a maximum of 60. For this example, I'm just going to, to put 20 in there um, since it's just to go over some things. But you'll want to have at least 30 cards, a maximum of three copies of each card. Now, like I said, the big deck building tip is to make sure you have enough foragers and enough you know, animals at different food costs so you can play them at different points during the game and then some adaptations to round it out and support you. But that's part of the beauty of it, is deck building can be whatever you want. You can fill up any strategy you want. And all the cards for this faction are listed here, and you can look at all the pictures uh, of each card. Um, car uh, In Kingdom Animalia, you can only make decks from one faction, so I can only have fish in here. I can't you know, put any mammals or reptiles or something in here as well. Uh, but one another thing you will need is you've got your main deck in starts in main deck here at least 30 cards no more than 60. The other thing you're gonna need are three objectives. So you're gonna replace that F with an OBJ, and the uh, the list of objectives is gonna come up. Now objective play is probably the biggest part of Kingdom Animalia. You know the win condition of each round is whatever the the objective says it is. So for example, the arid desert. The first player to score two kills wins. That's the that's the objective there. You've got the planes. First player to stockpile 20 food, 25 food over their starting amount wins. Um, so you want to pick objectives that go with the kind of strategy you're running and the type of cards you're using. When you pick your three objectives, let's say I'm going to take planes, you put it in this face down pile, and you only want one copy of each objective, and you must pick three different objectives. Your opponent will do the same and you'll play from those objectives there throughout the game. So we'll do a plains, we'll do a savanna, and then since you know we're doing fish, let's put a coral reef in there, huh? So again, you'll want your main deck to be in starts in main deck and your three objectives to start in the face down pile. So let's go ahead and save this, and we'll hop into a game. So you or your opponent during the tournament or anytime you play Kingdom Animalia will need to select new game, Give it a title. I'll just do that. Um, do make sure you have game here. Play style doesn't really matter. And then you'll want to do two players. Um, I'm just going to do solo for now since I'm just showing things off. Enter the game. We're going to pick this testing deck, and the interface pops up right here. Uh, so normally you just have your opponent on this side, and you'll be on this side. You can see your objectives over here in this face down pile. If I click there. I can reveal all cards to me, Fine Line Games, so I can see my three cards here. So then if I if I click on it, just normal click, it comes up with my things down here and I can hover over them and look at them. Um, I don't know why it jumps back and forth like that between the two sides of the screen, it's just an untap thing. And at the start of each round you'll select an objective. Also at the start of each round you'll draw six cards. So this is a perfect time to jump into uh, how the game is played. So Kingdom Animalia is a strategy card game similar like to a Magic the Gathering or a Yu-Gi-Oh! or a Hearthstone, something like that. Um, resource management is paramount in this game. Everything costs food to play. For example, this blue shark costs 20 food. This adaptation called the Reef costs 2 food. Food is you know, the lifeblood of this game. And that's what you're going to use to pay for everything. So having a good economy uh, is very important. Animals all have a forage value, which is that little orange icon on the stat bar there off to the right, where it says plus two on this one, or on the trout it says plus three. That's how much food they gain each turn when they forage. Uh, I'll go into foraging in a second here. Um, on untap, we use these counters over here to measure our our food and our, our number of set wins. So, Kingdom Animalia is played, um, you play best of five. Uh, each round has a different objective, and when you win a round, you gain a point. First person to gain three points wins. So, we track food with this white one here, and uh, round wins with this black one. So, I can go two uh, up to three there, and then here, any amount of food. Right click to get rid of food, left click to add food. This is where you'll want to keep track of it. In the actual physical card game, that's all measured in, in tokens, but it works much better to do it like that in Untap. So at the start of each game, uh, players will have to decide who is first player and who is second player, and that persists through the, the whole game itself between all the rounds. Uh, the advantages of being first player are that um, 
you go first in the event of speed ties between animals. So let's say I play this blue shark and my opponent plays something with a speed of 7 as well. You can see the speed is that yellow icon there. Um, I, as being first player, will win that speed tie and my animal can go first, which is absolutely crucial in a lot of cases. The advantage of being second player is in the very first round of the game, you get to pick the objective. And uh, you know, a smaller bonus is your opponent conducts their different phases of their turns before you do, so you have the opportunity to react. Again, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, the way you decide who's going to be first or second player is you bid food. So you secretly choose a number between 1 and 5 food, and you bid that amount. And if you win, if you bid the most food, you lose that amount of food from your starting value of 10, and uh, you get the choice of being first or second player. And then your opponent gets whatever you don't choose. If there's in the event of a tie, you just roll a d20 and one person picks odds, one person picks evens. You don't have to bid any food. You can choose to bid zero and you can bid up to five. Just bear in mind that starting with less food makes the game a lot harder to start with. So you got to weigh your options there. Um, at the very start of the game, like I said, you get 10 food. And then at the end of each round, you'll gain a certain amount of food, which I'll go into in a little bit here. Um, so let's say... We're starting out the game, we draw our hands of six, I've decided to be, you know, we, we, we rolled the die, I got the choice, I decided I wanted to be second player. So I would choose from one of my three objectives. I want to play the planes. So I would just move that over here, just click and drag, and now the planes is the objective we're playing. Again, it wouldn't normally be mirrored like this, it's just because I'm doing a solo game. Uh, so our objective is the first player to stockpile 25 food over their starting amount wins. So uh, start the game. If I'm second player, my opponent would go first, and they would conduct their management phase. Each turn is broken up into, into three phases. You have the management phase, combat phase, and status phase. Management phase is when you pay for all your animals and adaptations you want to play. You play everything. Uh, you can move stuff around on the field. And then combat phase is when the animals will battle. And status phase is when any other conditions are are uh, resolved. So, uh, since this is mirrored here, it's a bit tough. But let's say in this first turn we've got our ten food. I want to play a minnow. Now, you when you play animals, you can play them to the back row or the front row. Uh, whenever you're playing, just make sure you have two separate rows like that. So the back row is where animals will, will forage. Most animals can only forage from the back row. If they can forage from the front, it says so on the card. Um, and that's how you gain food. You would forage at the start of each management phase. So since this is the first turn of the game, neither of us have animals, no one forages. But at the start of the next turn, uh, you can forage and gain more food back. So if I was going to play this minnow into the back row, you can see its food cost up there in the upper right is 3. So I would subtract three food from my total and play the minnow onto the field. Uh, I guess now is a great time to go over what's on each card. So on an animal here, you have the name, the food cost, which I just pointed out. You have what type of animal it is. It's fish. All the cards in my deck have to be fish. And it's you have its diet, which affects you know certain abilities and stuff like that. Then on some animals, like this blue shark, you can see right under where it says food, it says shark. Certain animals are part of certain groups or families that have different bonuses when they do things. The cards will all say what they do. For example, with the blue shark, this animal costs five less food to play if you played another shark this round. So, you know, you kind of want to build your deck around families of animals. Uh, the minnow is not part of any family, uh, so we don't have to worry about that. You've then got the picture there and the stat line right below that. Starting from the left with green, you have health, then attack, then defense, then speed, then evasion chance, and then the forage value. Health is obviously how much damage the animal can take before it's killed. Attack is how much damage it deals when it attacks. Defense is uh, reduces incoming damage by that amount. Speed determines when animals go during the turn, so faster animals go first. The evasion chance is when an animal is attacked, as long as it's not exhausted, which I'll get to in a second, um, you will roll a d20, which on untap, you would just click right here and roll d20. I rolled a 10. If the amount you rolled on the die, on the d20, meets or exceeds the number on the card, so in this case it's 16 or higher, then you evade the attack, you, you ignore all effects, you don't take any damage, the attack just misses. 
Um, so smaller or faster or camouflaged animals generally have higher evasion chances. Um, so something you want to keep in mind. And then like lastly, the just the forage value. Below that, you have the ability. Every single animal in the game has a unique ability. Some you know abilities are shared between animals, but they all have some sort of ability. For example, the minnow's ability is that it is unaffected by stat changes that affect fish. The black tip shark gains one plus one attack for each other shark you control. So they each do something. That's going to be kind of what makes the card unique. The stat line will, will make and the food cost will make animals somewhat unique, but their abilities are what make them interesting. Below that, you have uh, the habitat and the biome that the animal is from. So this is a freshwater animal, and it is aquatic. It can be uh, either aquatic, terrestrial, arboreal, or some combination of those, and that you know is affected by different card abilities and animal abilities and stuff like that. Um, and then you have the collector information at the very bottom. You have this is card number one out of forty because this card is from the one of the two player starter sets, and then you have the rarity which this is a circle, so it's just a common. It doesn't really matter for gameplay, it's just collector information. So I've put my minnow in the back row. I've paid my three food. On the first turn of each round, no one can attack, so no attacking is happening here. Um, we move on to the next turn, and you want to draw a card, so you click on your deck and draw one. Uh, looks like I drew another rainbow trout. So right after you draw each turn, you both independently, like at the same time, you don't take turns here, you decide what you want to forage with. So foraging, like I said, is how you gain food. And you can almost always uh, forage from the back row, and some animals can forage from the front. To forage, you're going to exhaust the animal, which in untap, you hover over them, press Z, and they go sideways. In magic, you maybe call this tapping. I think it's called tap in untap. Let's see. Yeah. Or pivot. What is it called? I guess it's called either, either one. It's just that little icon there. This is the animal is now exhausted. Animals exhaust when they forage or when they attack, or in rare cases when they use abilities. An, an exhausted animal can't do anything else the rest of the turn. It can't attack, it can't forage, it can't evade, which is important. Um, so it's totally it's done whatever it's gonna do that turn. And so when if you have an animal in the front row that you want to attack with it needs to be unexhausted when you go into the combat phase. But since this minnow is in my back row, I'm just foraging with it, I'm going to exhaust it to forage. And it gains, as you can see there, plus two food. So I would increase my food value by two. If I had more animals in the back, I, you know, I could gain more food than that. Um, it's just however much you forage for. So let's say I had three minnows, I would gain six food if I forage with all of them. So I know I don't have the food for it right now, but let's just say this turn... I played this black tip shark to the front. Um, after the you play everything during the management phase, and after the management phase is over, you go into combat phase. The order of when everything activates in combat phase is based on speed. So this black tip shark has a speed of six. Let's say my opponent had something with a speed of five. I can then decide this black tip shark. Do I want to attack with it or not? Attacking obviously is the way that you score kills on opposing animals, which is important for a lot of object objectives. Um, but the downside of attacking is that you exhaust, and so you leave yourself open for attacks. You can't evade. Uh, attacks only happen from the front row to the opposing front row, unless there is nothing in the front row, to which then you can attack the back row. And a few, a few animals you kind of mess with that. Sometimes they can attack the back row directly or attack from the back row, but attacking is almost always from the front to the front. So you kind of use things in your front to protect your own back line, and to attack your opponent with hopes of getting to their backline, because if you can disrupt their economy, you know, you're in a great spot. So let's say I want to attack with this black tip shark. I would exhaust it and then click on it. And there's something on here that says target source. It's not really gonna work, but normally you would hit target source and then click on your opponent's animal. Since this is like a mirror, it doesn't actually work, but like let's say I was going to uh do that. It's like the minnow attacks the shark. So you would just point on the, on the animal that's attacking, you just click target source on it, which is currently not working. I'm not 100% sure why. It's just being a little buggy. You would just click on it, target the source, and then click on whichever of your opponent's cards you're using ability on or attacking or whatever. And if you guys are in Discord, you just say, okay, my black tip shark attacks your black tip shark. 
or you would say you type it in chat if you guys are just using chat. Um, and then obviously target a source to show what you're attacking. So um, my shark attacks, and let's say it attacks my opponent's black chip shark, who is exhausted, so it can't evade, so there's no need to roll the d20. My attack is 7, the defense is 1. Sorry, my attack is 8, the defense is 1, so I'd be doing 7 damage. So since this is mirrored, it's a bit weird, but when you take damage, you just add counters. So I've taken 7 out of my 12 health, so i got 5 health left. When you need to adjust damage, you can just right-click or left-click on the counter to move it up and down. Uh, once uh, you get enough damage counters that equal your health, the animal is killed, and you can just click on it and send it to the discard pile, or just uh, you can just carry it over. Like, let's say this thing got killed, just carry it over here to the discard pile and drop it in. You can move everything around in untap by clicking and dragging, and the best way to, to see what all a card can do is just to click on it left click on it and see the options that come up. So that's you know, the gist of gameplay. Um, with this objective we're just seeing who can stockpile 25 food over their starting value wins. So if we both start at 10, the first person to reach 35 food wins. And you'll just play as long as it takes. Some objectives have turn limits, so it'd be you know, 10 rounds or 7 rounds or 12 rounds or something. Each round consists of the management, combat, and status phase. You can keep track of rounds on the objective just by like adding a counter to them. So this is round one, then round two, round three, stuff like that. Um, you play to the objective. Whoever wins the game, or wins that uh, wins that objective, gains a point. So let's say I won, I get a point, and now I'm up one nothing. Um, the next, whoever loses a round, is the person who gets to pick the next objective. So if my opponent lost, they would pick a new objective, and we would play that. And whoever wins three objectives wins the game. Um, food comes into this in that at the end of each round. Both players gain uh, 10 food, just right off the bat, so I'd go up to 19. And then you gain 5 more food for each loss you have in the game. So if my opponent lost, I would gain 10 and they would gain 15. If I'm up 2 nothing, I gain 10 and my opponent gains 20. That's to you know, kind of keep a balance and have some comeback mechanics. Um, that doesn't you know, that doesn't prevent three nothings. I mean, there's a lot of times where you'll win three nothing or three one, but it makes it a bit more gives you a bit more of a chance if you just had a bad round. And so all of this is in the, uh, the instruction manual on on Discord. If you have any more questions about it, just refer there or ask me specifically. Um, the last thing I want to go over is forfeiting because it, it can be very important. So in Kingdom Animalia, uh, you can't you can forfeit games before the objective is met. So let's say um, my, it looks like my opponent's definitely going to win this objective, and I either want to move on to the next round, or I don't want them to get this huge food advantage that I can't overcome, because food continues between rounds. It's persistent. So if I have 19 food now, then I'll have 19 food plus some more at the start of the next round. So you don't really want your opponents to get these huge advantages and you can't come back from. So let's say things are not going well, Neither of us have won the objective yet, but it's definitely looking like I'm going to lose. As long as you are past round four, so the start of round five, you can forfeit. And you forfeit during the status phase. So after management, after combat, during that status phase, you can say, okay, I give up. You can only forfeit if A, four full rounds have passed, B, you have less total food than your opponent does, and C, forfeiting would not lose you the game outright. So if you already have lost two rounds, you can't just forfeit the third round. you, you got to play it out. Um, so there's a lot of advantages and disadvantages with for, uh, forfeiting. Obviously, if you forfeit at the right time, it can save you from getting into a huge hole. It can be a bit of a strategic play to forfeit a round so you can maybe gain an advantage in a later round. The, the downside of that is you gave your opponent one point, and if they get to three points, they win. So, you know, some give and take there. So again, all of that is in the rules. Uh, refer to those or ask me on Discord. I'll be available um, almost all the time during games, and so I can answer these questions as they come up. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else we need to go over here. Um, you can access your deck by clicking on your deck and clicking Find Card. If you had something that, for whatever reason, like if one of your abilities lets you search for something, you can click Find Deck, pull it out, add it to your hand, or put it on the field. Um, this is not showing the actual order of your deck, it just shows you know, each card like that, and so you don't have to shuffle every time you look at your deck, which is really nice, a really nice feature of Untap. 
you can shuffle your deck just like that and it'll say that your deck was shuffled um the different objectives and different animals say what they do some reference things in different ways you can uh, peep cards to look at the top few cards of your deck or you can draw and then put back onto your deck in some order like put this back on the top of the deck um, at the end of each round this is important to go over any cards that are on the field get put into the discard pile so you can like click and drag to highlight everything send it to the discard pile any cards in your hand go back to your deck so send all of these to the top of the main deck and then you'll want to shuffle and then you draw for the next round uh, so at the end of each round, any cards in the field go to the discard pile, any cards in your hand go back into your deck, and you shuffle your deck, and then you'll draw a new hand. You always draw new hands of six, except when a, you know an objective says otherwise. Um, all the rules of the game are trumped by animal abilities, card abilities, stuff like that. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If anything looks like it's breaking the game, that's by design. Um, if there's any specific questions about certain interactions between cards, uh, please reach out on Discord, and I can answer that question as soon as possible. Um, but it looks like we've gone over everything. So uh, once again, if something was not clear in this episode, in this uh, this video, or you have any specific questions that I didn't get to cover, uh, please reach out on Discord or res and or consult the rules on Discord. That's going to be in uh, ka-info on the Discord. If you're interested in playing in the tournament, which starts next Sunday, please reach out to me on Discord. Please join the Discord, and then send me a, a private message saying that you're interested in playing, and I'll add you to the list. We already have several people who are committed to playing. Um, I'll play if we have an odd number of people, uh, but obviously I'll defer prizes to others. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, this has piqued your interest in Kingdom Animalia and maybe answered a few questions for you. Uh, the tournament's super beginner-friendly. Uh, we just want to get people playing the game. Uh, it's super easy to play online, everything's totally free, and I'm hoping that this has been a good instructional video on how to get you started. I highly encourage anyone who's interested in playing to play some practice games with a friend, um, or play with me. I'm more than happy to play any time, just reach out on Discord. But I've been Henry with Fineland Games, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.